when you look at this path and then see a lot of company which otherwise seen as success stories not doing well what would an investor do investor will look at okay where is the other part of value being created then you look at the part of value called deep tech where by design you have a ip by design you are going to be able to capture a lot more premium for your product and service and hence your margins are going to be much higher than anyone else who is offering the same service because you are unique and that creates long term defensible value so deep tech by design will be profitable hi wherever you're joining us i hope you're doing well welcome to tech conversations where we bring you insights from tech entrepreneurs cxos and investors I'm Hari Arakli, and in this episode, Arpit Agarwal, a partner at Bloom Ventures, talks about how he sees India's deep tech ecosystem growing. In the final analysis, deep tech startups too must face the same litmus test of viability in the market, which means they must deliver serious value to customers at scale. Only then will they become what venture capital investors like to call large outcomes. Returns on successful deep tech companies can be impressive. The ecosystem will need to find ways to match the money for long-term projects with focused execution, Arpit says. Even as the next generation deep science and engineering based startups begin to emerge in India, long-term capital is necessary, especially in sectors such as life sciences, for example. I hope you find this conversation interesting and insightful. dive into the deep end pun intended since we want to talk about deep tech with you um maybe you can give us a sort of a quick overview of how bloom came to be uh, investing in deep tech right um uh, was it a sort of a interesting accident or was it something that you saw in the market and you wanted to sort of build some formal uh, investment thesis around it just walk us through how you got into deep tech and go from there so one thing that has been unique about us and i would say uh, probably unique for many other firms too so uh, i don't think we have like the patent on it but what we pride ourselves in doing hari is to not wait for consensus to emerge and uh, to be able to make first principles based bets on companies as and when they we find them so long time back and 2012 2011 Uh, we found a company called Carbon Clean. Uh, these were kids from IIT Kharagpur trying to do something in carbon space. Uh, they didn't have a full-fledged business plan even, but we chose to back them. And it took them about five, six years to really figure out what their business model should be and to find more backer. They got a lot of grant from UK government. However, now they have become in world's one of the world's largest industrial-scale carbon capture companies. Yeah. Now that happens. not because not necessarily because you had a thesis about it uh, it it just felt right to do at that point of time and you were mostly following what is first principle saying in the world there will be need for carbon capture there will be need for uh, new solutions to emerge and these people seem like the right kind of motivated uh, people to be able to do that uh, that i think has been the the central pillar around all of these stories will be built so we have done a lot of deep tech we have done electric vehicles we have done ed tech uh, we have done a few other saas companies ahead of the curve ahead of the market and that has only happened i think uh, because we didn't have to learn from anywhere else in the world and we had to we had completely to back ourselves with our our, with our own conviction you obviously don't get it all right but but then when it gets right it becomes beautiful mm. i mean for a more general audience uh, i thought it might also be useful to have your definition of what is deep tech today in the india context yeah. um, tell us a bit about that i mean how do you look at what is a a genuine deep tech company for you in india because it obviously varies from here to silicon yeah. valley or That's wherever right. the broad definition of deep tech in valley and india would roughly be the same mm-hmm. we are talking about companies which are using a few years of research to be able to come up with a new idea or new technology at the core it is not reinventing saying i am putting a workflow software or something which is as simple as putting a, a retail front store front out there however uh, each of these companies have spent or the founders have spent many years typically doing research around a new idea or a new concept 
to come up with something which was globally unique in nature. Whatever is globally unique initiates what could be a deep tech tomorrow. Uh, the globally unique piece is that this has never been done before. This is built from the unique environments of what is the challenge in India. For example, frugality is a big challenge in India. Uh, it is also built for the for the new age technology. Sometimes technology was invented 30 years back, has to be reinvented today because the level of technology has dramatically shifted. All of these things constitute deep tech in areas such as biotechnology, med tech, drones, cyber security, uh, generational, generative AI, uh, it could be uh, autonomous mobile robots, it could be industrial automation, uh, bunch, of electric, bunch of electric vehicles and technologies which go inside it, for example, new batteries or new kind of battery management systems or even creating a new full-fledged electric vehicle could be deep tech uh, at the onset. So a whole range of industries get impacted by these and uh, inevitably uh, you are talking about a few years of gestation before these companies start seeing revenue. Can you talk a bit about um, why as a VC firm um, you are excited about the deep tech opportunity in India and maybe uh, in, in sort of articulating that the why, you can also talk us through what you see as the opportunity and maybe deep sort of dive into the landscape that you just mentioned, uh, you know, several different verticals. Right. Uh, let's take a step back. Venture capital at the core is a kind of capital that only that services best a company which, which goes through a losses for a few years and then turns profitable in a way that becomes very, very large tomorrow. So deep tech or companies in deep tech are a perfect example of what where venture capital works best. So as a pure play venture capitalist, you will be willing to sustain losses for a few years in hope that as and when this turns around the corner, there will be a very fat amount of margin or profitability to be built into the companies. Let me give you an example. Let us say there is a company called Ati Motors. This company is into autonomous mobile robots. They do factory automation. This company has been, is, is coming from IISC research. This company spent five to six years making a robot which works on the shop floor. Five, six years is a lot of time. Someone has to sustain that long of investment and then someone has to then help them get to the market and slowly they will start taking off. However, today that they have now taken off, their gross margins are, are between 60 to 80 percent. And now, and, and, the, and, and even then, there are very few competition, about it, very few, very limited competition exists. Because it was built with very core pieces of technology put together in a manner that no one else could put, uh, could, uh, no one else could in a, uh, in, a, in a short span of time. If someone spends enough amount of time, let's say three years, they will probably get there, but it will be three years ahead of the curve. So any company which has, which sustains losses for a while and over a period of time generates a lot of profit uh, is probably a good example of what venture capital works. Now, in the market, why venture capital has not seen a lot of, at least Indian venture capital, has not done a lot of deep tech investing is because the market in many cases, the companies were not ready, the market was not ready to adopt these technologies. Indian market was not large enough. Uh, companies had to target global markets, including the America. And you also wanted to make sure that there was enough supply of capital for future rounds of cap for funding. Because of these reasons, deep tech investing has been subdued. Although almost every fund claims to have a few deep tech companies, uh, it has not gone to the, to the not, not done as fast as it could have been. Uh, uh, because of all these eco ecosystem factors. But in today's time, uh, in, uh, you know, sitting in 2024, uh, one can see the ecosystem is nicely coming together. And I am very, very positive that over the next five to 10 years, we will see a lot more investment flowing into deep tech companies. Mm. Can you talk about that a bit more? What are some of the things that you're seeing today in the Indian startup ecosystem that gives you this sense, this sense that the deep, deep tech is sort of coming together now? Let's look at example of biotech. There is a government department, uh, there is a government agency called BIRAC, which has done an excellent job of promoting and investing into very early stage biotech innovations. 
they probably have supported 500 if not 1000 different uh, innovations and companies have been created out of that maybe 5 3 400 companies were created out of that now many of these companies did not see light of the day because or we have not heard about them not too many of them at least because the ecosystem was lot more nascent investment was not flowing in companies were not growing up and companies were not growing up therefore investment was not flowing in. it was like a chicken and egg uh, kind of a situation over this period of time however what has happened is a very large pool of talent has been created people know what it takes to build a company to level a now level a may not be good enough but level a is great for the for from the place that we started now some people who are at level a will want to aspire to get to level b and level b then level c and so on and when you see more and more entrepreneurs who are who understand all of this much better and then our engineering let's say they enter today and see okay there are some examples of level c can i learn from the c and start at started very early today their pace their maturity their connection and their ability to build a business would be far better than any scientist who would start today and trying to do zero to one journey this is an example of how great quality entrepreneurs will be will when great quality when better quality entrepreneurs start biotech companies more funding will flow to them now this is one piece now with venture capital a big challenge is that we only follow what is a trend what is likely to generate returns for us or what is likely to get more investment tomorrow when you see fewer companies being invested at seed stage you wait for the companies to emerge at series a or series b stage and when you see very few companies investing at series b stage you don't want to invest at seed stage as a feedback as and when more and more investment flows at seed stage some of these companies will show the way and get to series b series c and and towards ipo at this point of time you will see a lot more capital flowing in so there is a function of talent there is a function of capital and there is also a function of domestic market a lot of biotech companies currently service global markets at some point of time india market at least in some narrow sliver will become large enough to sustain biotech companies within india Hmm. which is when you start seeing that you okay, you are closer to the customer it becomes faster to get to them and hence the companies grow up faster so slowly in biotech for example over the last 15 years thanks to a lot to the effort of birac capital teams which is talent and the market is coming together and we will start seeing a lot more investment flowing into biotech companies that is the nature of an ecosystem now in biotech the ecosystem is now maturing in for example uh mobile robots autonomous mobile robots like ati motors ecosystem is slightly ahead you see a lot of you see a lot more adoption of it in indian market and hence people know that this is a demand and hence people as an investors know that this is a demand and investors flow into company which are doing a good job and start investing in them hmm. would you say this year perhaps and certainly into next year even though the overall sort of macro economy is still uncertain and you know the anticipated uh, uh, you know pairing back of interest rates in the us has not ha- happened yet and all of those things leaving that aside in india like you said an ati motors last year did a product refresh uh, an i stem has started uh, human trials that's right uh, pixel has that's launched right. a couple of satellites that's right so across verticals would you say we are now beginning to see indian deep tech startups getting into that growth mode yes and and if you agree with that yes i agree with that yes at this point now what are their big challenges once you get into growth stages a deep tech company and an enterprise tech company look very similar they have similar challenges one you need to hire the right kind of people two you need to manage your finances better three you need to expand geographies uh, four you need to keep in touch with the with the market and keep creating good and, good and better products so those ca- challenges remain now once you are past this stage of product market fit uh, it is much easier uh, for the companies to because now survival is not a question you are now looking at how to grow and how to grow is typically going via team and money and talent and uh, and largely putting the uh, resources together to cap- capitalize on the opportunity 
give us a few more examples from your own portfolio of really exciting sort of you know the next generation of deep tech companies that might be coming out of india i have been very excited about a company called uh, yakrit uh, this company has created uh, a unique machine uh, which in case of an acute liver failure patient uh, this machine is able to filter the yeah, do the functions of liver which is roughly filtering a lot of toxins out in a biological manner outside a human body mm. it is a exciting piece of technology because many things have come together one billions of cells billions of live human cells are functioning outside of human body this has never been done before a lot of technology and engineering has to go inside to make sure that right amount of blood passes through them so that cells don't get degraded and they can be used for a long time and three you have put together this in an environment that the patient really trusts you because uh, then you are then you, it's it is basis a lot of feedback from the clinic such things are outstanding just to imagine because each person who agrees to uh, use a device even in test case is going to save life most likely they have worked with very heavy pigs and they have seen uh, almost all of the pigs starting to walk after being after the liver was killed uh, medically and uh, they started to walk which is fantastic breakthrough now such things do happen in india uh, they don't happen as often possibly but do happen there are the another few companies there is a company creating a completely new class of anode uh, which is a battery anode uh, to be able to you know uh, increase the capacity of batteries or reduce the cost of batteries or increase the life cycle of batteries now this is core material science innovation which is just which takes time at the at the core it takes 3 years maybe 5 years someone's phd has to get involved and and that much effort 5 uh, 6 years of work has to go in to be able to come up with a new idea and then then hopefully something will emerge out of that we recently met a company which is making uh, biobots uh, which is taking a, a few biobots inside you know there are tubules inside our teeth enamel and there are the cleaning this cleaning required in the teeth enamel there is nothing like that ever exists in the world uh, and such things are happening inside laboratories of various indian institutes it is fantastic to see this always happened the good news is that now it is seeing it is coming closer and closer to the market which is fantastic all that you have learned at bloom with your experience all the way back to carbon clean yeah and and today as you look at the landscape what are some of the things that you all are kind of brainstorming in terms of how to get these companies to be successful on their commercialization journey there is no one size fit all answer every industry medtech could be different from electric vehicles could be different from a uh, green hydrogen could be different from uh, electric vehicles pro space broadly and everything is very unique in their own respect uh, and therefore each industry and adoption curves are different however what doesn't change uh, is one that the product has to be made in a manner that customer wants to accept it and customer starts seeing value on day one like for example lathi motors when they deploy a bot it it saves money it saves labor cost at human salary uh, at indian salary prices which is fantastic four humans replaced by one bot it is a 18 month payback period in india it is fantastic because now the conversation is very simple there are 50 customers who are using me this is a bot which saves four people's worth of uh, money and you can deploy it and in within 18 months you will recover the value of it it is fantastic the conversation is very easy so the path from a core in, core inside core product into the into proving value to the customer is sometimes quite long it could take 5 years and it has to require a lot of iteration so one what does not change is that you have to be very close to the customers keep looking at their feedback and keep improving a product such that it shows value as close to day one as possible sometimes it is takes it takes time which is fine as close to day one as possible the second thing is you let would then produce at the quality that really works for them over a long period of time let us say someone is investing into a 20 lakh rupees bot if the bot fails in 6 months it is not good enough now bot could fail not only because you didn't engineer it well but because your supplier didn't 
uh, give you the right components or something else went wrong. So the entire supply chain has to be well oiled and has to come together. The third piece very often that companies fail and the founders fail in look, is in looking at how do you then you know take success from one corner and moving into other corner such that you can expand the market. Very often when they go to the market their uh, segments could be very small but then how do you then keep expanding the segment uh, is a challenge which some people don't automatically know it comes with some effort and, and time. So in terms of uh, funding these companies the sort of uh, traditional VC model does it does it work for them in India in the Indian context? Very much a lot of these companies uh, are very could be invested by Indian venture capital and will be getting giving venture class return within the time period. Typically our funds are 10 years long can give it return in 10 years uh, in 10 years period. A few companies especially in life sciences a longer gestation could be required. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe 15 year funds have to emerge. Uh, so far we haven't seen those happening uh, which is why which is one of the reason why life sciences continue to struggle in terms of funding raised. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a matter of time we will see a lot more of that happening too. Mm -hmm. And at Bloom you would invest out of a sort of an overall fund. We do invest. You don't in sort of that's right. break it down know, into silos. Right? That's right. Huh. Yeah. So if it's a good opportunity, it's a good opportunity. It is a good opportunity. And that's I think that is the reason why if you look at if you take the sliver of our deep tech investment portfolio, we may have invested in about 25, 30 companies uh, over the lifetime. This sliver of deep tech companies actually delivers far better returns hmm. than everything else because the filters were the were as tight and naturally because you had the IP the potential of success was higher the the, uh, the chances the probability of them generating a return is higher. Mm. And, and give us a feel for the, the conversations with your LPs I mean in fintech for example um, now I would say investors understand yeah. the India opportunity yeah. um, in, in, in deep tech to do your LPs. Uh, get the opportunity yet? See, I am suspecting that most LPs do not bother too much about fintech or deep tech or edtech or or any other different sectors because sectors will keep coming and going. They are always, especially the institutional ones, are investing over a 10 year period. So they are not bothered about a specific company or a specific sector too much. They do understand whether the manager has the ability to go deeper into a sector and create unique insights. Mm. That is an important challenge. However, that does not mean that they are going to either uh, bothered about a particular insight or even be bothered about a particular investment because they are in, their objective is to have a uh, to give their manager as much of a free run as possible so that the manager can do their job. It, uh, if they had to do this job then they would have done it themselves. I am suspecting that is not a challenge. Uh, However, there is definitely somewhat education required if a new kind of sector is emerging. For example, climate tech is an interesting sector. Now deep tech is morphing partly into climate tech. A lot of deep tech is climate oriented. This does require some degree of education to say, okay, uh, there is a reason why we are investing a lot more on this and we are willing to take a suggestion on whether more and more investment should flow into this as compared to what we are originally planning. Let us say for argument's sake, we were doing 20% investment in climate tech, deep tech, uh, should we get, should we do more? It is unclear at this point of time. We, we definitely take that feedback on that piece and, uh, and implement accordingly. Is it too early to talk about uh, consumer oriented deep tech companies in India? I mean, so far at least. There are very few. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I remember meeting Atomberg right. in sign uh, at IIT Bombay. I'm an IIT Bombay alumnus. So they called me and I met them. I didn't think it would get this far in consumer business. Right, and it says motor technology, motor technology, the BLDC motor technology is not new, it has been known enough, uh, but they obviously done exceedingly well, they found the right investors. Uh, there is also a company called Emotix, uh, which, which makes Miko robots, uh, which is an educational robot which moves around. Another company that I passed saying it does not make sense, probably will never you know see light of the day and so on, but then of course entrepreneur has proved me wrong. Uh, that does happen to me. Uh, but then it is very few, it is very, very limited examples of deep tech for consumer uh, where really hardcore technology because the gestation is just too long that people rather sell to uh, businesses than to wait for further gestation to consumer. I mean in the past uh, you know experts like you have told us that uh, by definition deep tech companies have to be global 
uh, and all of that. Yes. But um, can you give us an update on what you're seeing in terms of uh, whether there is appetite for these kinds of products in the local market? Absolutely. Okay. So, which is, I think, I'm becoming more and more, I'm becoming more and more clearer that if there is not enough local market, the companies will not grow as fast as they can. Hmm. Because there is something to be said about living the same, living the same, in the same, breathing the same air, talking the same language. There is something to be said about that. There is a lot more uh, ecosystem serendipity that comes together when you're in the same country, same city if possible, uh, and so on, as compared to, you know, having to fly halfway across the world to get to a place which you, have, you don't know most people, uh, they're all uh, foreigners and, and it is very, a lot of familiarity is just missing. There is definitely that. Of course, in an entrepreneurs in software uh, area, software products area have proven, uh, not proven that it is possible. You can fly in across the world and you can build large companies like for example, a Freshworks or a Zoho are great examples. Very large companies got created across the world and sure, there's a, there's a fantastic thing. We haven't seen that happening to deep tech, I'm guessing. But the good news is, as and when this happens in domestic market, the companies just explode. We have an example of a company called Battery Smart, uh, which has reinvented a swapping technology. and Use the battery, regular batteries, put together some degree of technology and, and made it available to e-rickshaw drivers to use it. They have grown like mushrooms, like weed, right? It's fantastic growth because the domestic market was just ready to pull it out of them, right? We have another example of a company called Vecmocon, which is into electric vehicle space again, domestic market focused. They have grown about 12x in two years, uh, which is no small feat by any, any imagination because it is just so, the market is so ready and you entered the right time and now it is just market is pulling it out of you. Uh, it's just, just fantastic. So the evolving thought, the, the leading thought that I have is you may have a technology which is just about ready, but it has to go to the market which is just about to break, break out. If the market is not breaking out, ideally domestic market, then deep tech will struggle for longer. You, you're, I mean, beyond uh, Bloom and, and uh, beyond being a VC investor, you're something of an evangelist. Uh, for I have been, in yes. India. You started yeah, we put together India Deep Tech, India that's Deep right. Tech. Yeah. Um, can you talk about some top lessons from that? I think India Deep Tech is now four odd years old at least. Yeah, yeah. four odd years old. Yeah. Uh, not much is happening inside India Deep Tech at this point of time, but the important learning from that is uh, that there is a need for entrepreneurs to learn from each other of how do you scale up. A person who has gone to the US and they've done two sales definitely can teach a thing or two about people who are still building product. A person who's done 20 sales can teach the same person at, 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 two, at scales of two and so on. There is a lot of learning that one can put together. There is that core business of that. Second, you can also share resources. In deep tech, the unique thing is most of us come not from deep science background. Therefore, we don't evaluate technologies, all kind of technologies equally. Uh, therefore, there's a need to have resource pool of experts who can say, okay, I understand this technology, use my expertise to evaluate this for your business, for your investment. Uh, that's second thing we can do. Third, we can put together a joint proposal to government of India, to anywhere else who's listening to us to say a lot more capital will be required and will uh, a lot more money will be made when capital is deployed into domestic deep tech funds. So we can create a supply chain of capital from LPs abroad to India. Such things can happen inside the India Deep Tech Alliance. We haven't done a lot, but more will definitely happen. Mm. On that front, I mean, just to illustrate where we stand today in sort of simplistic terms for a general audience, I mean, e-commerce probably now 15 years story yes. and billions of dollars yes. into it. Yes. Uh, and we still don't have a genuine profitable e-commerce leader out of India. Although there's so much value that's been created. Uh, can you tell us where we stand uh, in deep tech? Maybe about 50 odd million or maybe 100 million has been invested over the last five years? More than that probably has yeah. invested in yeah. deep tech-ish companies. But yeah, maybe it is a few hundred millions uh, over the last five years. Uh, the This is another perspective. And let's take a step back also, Nakin. Uh, in the last three years, it is becoming clearer and clearer 
that a lot of larger companies in unicorn sort of companies in India will have to find public market as an exit. Mm. That is how that path is clear because M&A is not larger than m and are not happening in India so far. Which means if you have to get to public markets, you have to live with those terms, those norms. Like for example, companies like Paytm which don't show profitability for a long time will get beaten in the market and companies which show profitability eventually become darlings like a Zomato. And market is able to create, you know, separate wheat from the shaft. I'm not saying which is which, but yeah, so that's not my advice about it. But point is, market has a way to figure out and there is a way the market functions, which is almost deterministic. Uh, not entirely, but largely deterministic. So which, if that is deterministic and available, all the companies have to start thinking about it after they are, let's say, beyond product market fit. When you're figuring out life out, that's fine. But once you've figured it out, that's the path to get to. And this is an important piece to always remember. Unfortunately, a lot of companies which raised a lot of money in the era of 2020-2021 are were in this path, but what but not looking at this path. They were outside of the product market fit, but they were not really looking at making profits. A lot of those companies are somewhere, they are not able to raise a lot of money. They are not, they're probably growing, they're doing some of them doing quite well, but not all of them will see light of the day. But some of them will figure out how to get to this deterministic, almost deterministic path. Now, when you look at this path and then see a lot of companies which are otherwise seen as success stories, not doing well, what would an investor do? Investor will look at, okay, where is the other part of value being created? Then you look at the part of value called deep tech, where by design, you have an IP. By design, you are going to be able to capture a lot more premium for your product and service. And hence, your margins are going to be much higher than anyone else who is offering the same service because you are unique. And that creates long-term defensible value. So deep tech by design will be profitable, will always be profitable for a long period of time. IdeaForge is an example. It's a deep tech company which is not listed in the public market. Uh, uh, it is profitable, it is growing, and the profitability is also quite high. Such things are likely to happen for all deep tech companies. And this will become, maybe today it is not mainstream yet, but very soon it will become the mainstream investment where you're saying a lot more investment has to flow into deep tech companies because this is the only way to create long-term defensible value translatable into EBITDA and, and fat profits. So this is like, this is, this is the where we have to go. Not all paths will go via internet. Some will go via deep tech too. Uh, what are some of the topics or even micro topics on deep tech in India where you would like to see a lot more conversation? We haven't spent enough time talking about the institutions that have helped in coming together of deep tech in India. Like for example, I think IIT Bombay signed, they completed 20 years recently, IIT Madras, Research Park, C Camp, uh, Venture Center in Pune, uh, Bayrak in general, we spoke about Bayrak just a while back and so on. A lot of good quality work has happened inside these institutions. And that has led to what we see in deep tech in India today. You know, many of the companies that we see, for example, Idea Forge has come from IIT Bombay and so on. Ether has come from IIT Madras uh, and so on. There are a lot of good uh, work that is happening inside it. We just, in general, in public domain or in wider mass audience, we don't discuss these topics a lot. We don't, we don't think about what it does it take to translate technology to the market. If the technology is good, what, what is the process of doing this? Who are the people involved? What is the right process? What is better than, what are the best practices? I think this is a very important conversation to have because when the broader audience understands it, there'll be a lot more empathy and sympathy for the work that a lot of very smart people do inside these institutions. This is one thing we don't do enough. Uh, second is very often, and I think we can't fault the businesses for this, very often, there is a tendency for businesses to buy what is available the cheapest and not necessarily where they are able to support a local startup. So I think enough conversation don't necessarily happen about whether a startup can pitch to them saying, I am local and perhaps better than everyone else, you should at least give me a, give me a chance as compared to giving it to someone who is much larger. This I think doesn't happen very often. Third is a lot of engineering and science talent is in India. This engineering and science talent uh, perhaps is more interested in continuing doing research, academic research, but 
I would love to see more of them considering joining deep tech companies in India and uh, in India. There's so many good companies being created and they are doing cutting edge work. Uh, one should consider joining them because when this happens, there's a full life cycle ahead of them. Uh, they can all become much better. I think these three things are very important to talk about.